Mr. Jones, before we went on a break, we were talking about the issue of whether there were EMTs allowed into the building, and I provided you with a couple of copies of some police reports. Do you see the highlighted portion? Yes. I'm going to read that, and you're going to follow along with me, okay? I then walked into a room with Sergeant Cario. At first glance, it did not appear there were any casualties. To the left of the room, as you walk in, there was a bathroom in the corner. There was a massive pileup of bodies in this room. At this time, I did not know it was a bathroom, and I wondered how the suspect had the time to kill that many people and stack them in the corner of the room. Sergeant Cario stated he was an EMT or maybe a paramedic, and that he had to check to see if anyone in the pile might have survived, may have survived. I agreed as the bodies were stacked two and three high and that some of the children at the bottom who were able to cram in first may have escaped bullets. He began to check for life signs, wounds, and attempt to find a pulse. The victims on the top of the pile redacted, and many of the bodies had injuries that were obviously fatal. It appeared as, though the teach as if the teachers in the room immediately upon hearing gunshots began to pack children into the bathroom. The children that were sitting on the floor of the bathroom were packed in like sardines. One little girl was sitting crouched in between the toilet seat in the back corner of the room. I thought she may have had the best chance for survival. As Sergeant Cario, entered, as Sergeant Cario got to the last bodies, it was clear that no one had survived. You've never heard of Sergeant Cario, have you? Um, I haven't. And you didn't know what he did in the building that day? Um, objection is the form of the time. You can answer. You didn't know what he did in the building I'm, that day? The tape was still edited. I don't even know where. Okay, Mr. Jones. Hearing that your murdered child received no medical attention. That's obviously distressing. Right, Mr. Jones? That's distressing. Objection is to form. It is distressing. That's why I was distressed just in general hearing those reports. Wait, when you say you were distressed hearing those reports, what reports are you talking about? What reports? The, the, I mean, again, this over, how was it, seven years ago? You know this is the one day you were to come down here and testify about Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. and, and are you going to tell me you haven't done anything to try to figure out what happened in those seven years? Objection is to form. Is that what you're saying? You walked in here totally unprepared? Just winging it today? Objection is to form. I, I don't know how to respond to that. I, Do you have the respect enough for these parents in this lawsuit to actually go back and try to find out what happened? I want to ask you about death certificates. Um, can, I want to play you a clip of something you and Mr. Dew said, February 12, 2015, and November 18, 2016. Can you play sealing death certificates for me? Yes, they're sealing the death certificates and everything. They made it a felony to release uh, birth certificates or death certificate information. What kind of country is that, where you can't release birth certificate and death certificate information? Mr. Jones. Sealing the death certificates, the fact that they were sealed, something you and Mr. Dew both said. How did you confirm that? Objection as to form? I, I don't want to answer these things incorrectly, so my memory is, is, I remember that they were saying it was the most sealed case ever, and that it was in the news, that there were all these lawsuits about unsealing things, and that the records and the, and the, the redacted police reports, I mean, this report you give me is almost all blacked out. This is what people were talking about. And so I can't accurately answer off of edited tapes. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. So I'm trying to answer your questions. You, I ever, just, you ever try to order a death certificate? They're $20. Anybody can get any one of them. Do you ever try? When you talked earlier about you did deep research, what was that? What deep research did you do? Well, I mean, I did look at the news articles saying they were being very secret about the case. And a lot of things were sealed that was unusual. Uh, there were lawsuits involved with that, and I, I, I did do, uh, you know, research on Bloomberg putting out an email you know, the day before, things like that, saying, get ready, there's going to be a big event. Okay. Um, I'm glad you brought up the Bloomberg thing. I remember um, there's a couple episodes where we've talked about this Bloomberg email, and you said to your audience that there was an email that came out in a lawsuit where Bloomberg told his people, get ready in the next 24 hours to capitalize on a mass shooting. That didn't happen. That's not a real email, is it? 
objective. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think it's exactly that, but there's, there's one similar to that. Yeah, I mean, what you said is not real. Objection is. Bloomberg never told his people, get ready in the next 24 hours to capitalize on a mass shooting. I that believe, did not happen. Objection is the form. I believe his gun organization did. I want to ask you about photos of the children. So I'm going to play a, a video clip about something you said about photos of the children. This is something you said on September 25th, 2014. Can you play photos of children? And then photos of kids that are still alive, they said died. I mean, they think we're so dumb that it's, it's, it's really hidden in plain view. Mr. Jones, you can admit that that statement was absolute nonsense. There are not photos of children who died who are actually still alive. That's not that is an out of context clip. I, I can't even respond to something like that. There, there, there have been cases where the Associated Press, major groups ran pictures of Sandy Hook children in Pakistan after a mass bombing and in the lineup of dead kid, uh, of parents about their dead kids. I believe the bombing happened in Pakistan. Bizarrely, they've got a Sandy Hook kid in there admitted. Uh, and, and then we've seen other cases. It's, it's very bizarre. It was widely reported during your divorce that your attorney said to the judge that you're playing a character, that you're a performance artist. So I want to ask you, I want to know, when you were making these claims about Sandy Hook, were you being a journalist or was this all performance art? Objection is form. When I say things on air, I believe it. At InfoWars, it was known from the very start that parents were being harassed by believers in the Sandy Hook conspiracy. You agree to that, right? No. Objection okay. before. InfoWars didn't know from the very start that Sandy Hook parents were being harassed. Uh, no, we didn't okay. not know from the very start. Can you, um, I want to play something, I want to play some, a clip from an InfoWars episode on January 18, 2013. A lot of people on YouTube have handled it in a rather insensitive way. Of course, we've had reports about them harassing some of the people who were involved. Over the years, there started to develop tension between you and the Sandy Hook parents after they started complaining about what you were doing. Correct? No. Okay, no tension. You will admit, I mean, you've done mocking imitations of Sandy Hook parents crying. Correct? No. And then you've got parents laughing, going, <laughs> and then they walk over to the camera and go, <laughs> and, 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 and not just one, but a bunch of parents doing this. Then we see footage of one of the reported fathers of the victims, Robbie Parker, doing classic acting training where he's laughing and joking, and they say, hey, we're live, and he goes, oh. <laughs> when you did this stuff about the crying and your imitations, this was all in service of an argument that some of these parents were actors, right? Objection is to form. No. I've looked at it and undoubtedly there's a cover up, there's actors, they're manipulating, they've been caught lying, and they were pre planning before it and rolled out with it. We've got people clearly coming up and, and, and laughing and then doing the fake crying. We've clearly got people where it's actors playing different parts of different people. Who were the actors playing the different, what, what were the different people where the same actor were playing the different parts? I'd have to see the context. But that was something you believe that was true. I, I, of an edited tape, I don't know what the context is. Well, I mean, look, Mr. Jones, we can see you say actors enough time that you, you and I can both admit, you can just admit right now, there have been multiple, repeated times where you've accused some of the parents of being actors. Objection is Right? I know, uh, I never, I, I covered the internet talking about how people look like actors. This is edited, I can't comment on it. Okay. So let me, let me understand this, Mr. Jones. Unless we play you a full four hour InfoWars clip, you just can't answer questions today, can you? It's not a four hour clip. If these were maybe minute long clips, yeah. not t five second, two second Well, you've telling your audience there, we've clearly got people where it's actors playing different parts of different people. So you were pretty certain, weren't you? <clears throat> I mean, if I, if I get, let's rejoice, if I, get, if I get Paul Watson here to testify, he's going to tell me he never believed in the crisis actor thing and thought it was a bad idea to talk about crisis actors. That's what he's going to say, isn't he? Yeah, because, I mean, he legitimately is his own person, and we don't tell people what to say or what to do. I respect him, and we have different points of view. We've had debates about Sandy Hook on air. You have different views about journalistic ethics, too. Well, I mean, when, when stuff's a big Internet debate that's going on, uh, and, then we, and then we cover that debate, and I give my opinion on it. That's, uh, that's, that's what happens. Okay. As time went on, 
starting into 2015, you learned that a Sandy Hook parent named Leonard Posner was behind a group called Honor Network. Correct? That was fighting online abuse of Sandy Hook victims? I did, that? I think. And when you learned that, and when Honor complained to YouTube in 2015, you told your viewers that Honor was run by Mr. Posner, you showed addresses being used by Mr. Posner, and you said he needed to be investigated in Florida. Didn't you say that? Objection as to form. No. Okay, let's play a clip here. I'm going to show you something that you and Mr. Dew were talking about on February 12th, 2015. Can you play addresses for me? He's been getting all kinds of grief from Mr. Posner. Uh, anything that comes out, so, uh, social media shut down due to Sandy Hook false copyrights. What's interesting is they list the address for the Honor Network in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. You look up the address on that, which says 908 North Dixie Highway. It is the address for a women's clothing store and a UPS, a uh, U-Haul rental place, U-Haul neighborhood dealer. So here, here's the 908 North Dixie Highway. There is no suite, but it's got two different buildings listed that address. One is a J JJ uh, Shop Women's Clothing Store, and you go to the other one, same address, U-Haul neighborhood dealer. Now you go to their uh, About Honor Network. I go to this one right here, guys. You can leave the camera right there. Honor Network, right there. Uh, it lists they say they're in Connecticut. It says they're in Newtown, Connecticut, but you go to that address, it's a U-Haul, UPS store, I'm sorry, it's a UPS store. Same address, Main Street, Newtown, Connecticut. It's a UPS store. But you think, you know, if they had this organization, they would have some sort of headquarters where they would be setting up a memorial. Well, we'll just start investigating that. I guess I'm gonna have to probably go on up to New Newtown. I'm gonna have to well, probably go investigate Florida as well. If a person were to stake out those addresses, they could wait for Mr. Posner to come pick up his mail, couldn't they? So if InfoWars, well, if, if it happened, that InfoWars went and searched and dug through records for private business filings and used DMCA reports that it had gotten to suss out that Mr. Posner was the head of honor and then reported it to its audience, that wouldn't be a good thing if that happened, right? Objection is to form. So I, I can't comment on hypotheticals. Sure. Oh, so if, if I was to say to you, if somebody was to come along and strike your hand with a hammer, would it hurt? You can't answer that question. Objection is to. I'm not striking anybody with hammers. I, I'll take it. That's no. Let's move on. I'll take it. That wasn't I a mean, question. He's, yeah, that's, is that a question? Is that, it? That's a comment. That's not a question. I, this is becoming one of the most harassing objections. This is for TV and for PR, not for a legitimate suit. That's what this is. That's all this is. You want to put it on TV. That's all. And this is just a show, and it's a bad show at that. It's a show of how not to be a lawyer in deposition of a case show. I mean, if you want to be fair and you want to ask real questions, go ahead. But don't make, don't make comments and then try to reinterpret those comments as a question and then try to put <coughs> words in the mouth of the witness. I mean, first-year law student should know that. What was your objection? You maybe want to take a break so we can have a few breaths? Yes, maybe you so. Can, yeah, you might need to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Maybe you can go back and read how to ask people questions. Well,